Hi guys, this is Keith Galley, and in this video we are going to discuss strategies that will help you win Othello almost every time. One of the basic principles that all Othello strategy revolves around is that you are trying to maximize the number of positions that you can put a piece while at the same time minimizing the positions that the opponent can move. One of the first basic components of this strategy is that you are always going to want to try to control the interior pieces on the board. And so when I say interior pieces, I'm talking about this central 4x4 here, and then more specifically, this central 2x2. Two two. And the reason we want to control these pieces is because they will have less moves or they can make to kind of take over these pieces and because we're in the center we can make moves all around the outside and the perimeter so to reiterate we want to take these interior pieces as much as possible and give the opponent these exterior pieces a second component of good Othello strategy is that while we're trying to control the interior pieces, the best pieces on the board that we can get are going to be the walls. So they're going to be the walls. And then the absolute best thing that you should always try to get are these corners. The reason we want the walls and the corners are because the opponent cannot outflank you if you are on a wall or if you're in a corner and they can only jump you if they're also on that wall. So if you're on these walls or in the corners, the opponents can barely ever take your pieces. So we always are striving to get the walls and we're always striving to get the corners. So right now, um, I have this piece on the wall. And as I said before, I'm gonna try to maintain these pieces in the middle because that will give me the most opportunities to get other walls and to get other corners. So one thing you might like kind of be worried about right here is right now the opponent has more pieces than me. However, that is totally fine in like the early game. We actually want the opponent usually to have more pieces than us because kind of the first thing that I said today was we want to limit how many moves the opponent can make while maxing the amount of moves that we can personally make. So the opponent having more pieces than us right now is good because that just gives us more opportunity to flip a lot of their pieces. So right now, again, I kind of made a stupid move, but because this is not the most difficult computer, he is giving me this corner or this wall. So I'm going to take that right now. So still, the opponent has more pieces than me, but I have these central pieces and as a result of that I have other walls that I can go to. So right now I'm going to flip over here because that gives me another wall. He's giving me a wall down here so I'm going to take that as well. So right now I can almost get this corner so I'm going to flip these pieces here. So I'm really trying to get this corner and I might have made a mad move there and gave him, given him that corner so I'm going to just be careful there. So right now, I'm going to make sure that I flip over this black piece of his because I do not want him to get this corner because if he has this corner, then he can take my wall pieces and I can't do anything about it. So another thing that uh, you kind of constantly want to be doing here is you want to be thinking moves in advance. So it's you're not always going to have a perfect move where you can easily flip to get a corner. So you're going to have to kind of be constantly thinking about what the implications of each one of your moves are. So like if you flip a move, uh, some pieces, you know, that are close to a wall, like will the opponent be able to get a corner as a result of that? Will the opponent be able to uh, possess some pieces on the wall as a result of your move? You kind of constantly want to be thinking about what's going to happen when you make the move that you're making. So right now I'm fine putting this piece right here on the wall, because even if he flips my two wall pieces right, and puts a piece here, I still can flip this whole entire row. And we'll see if that happens. Um, so he didn't do that, so I'm gonna get some more wall pieces 
here. And so right now I'm going to be careful because I don't know if I necessarily want to flip this piece that has the red little uh, tile on it. The reason I don't want to do that is because if I flip this and then let's say he gets a piece over here, then he can get that corner. So I'm going to be careful to do that for now. Right now I'm just going to you know make some simple moves that only flip one piece but don't give him any more moves. So right there. So right now he kind of has the interior. So I'm going to try to get that back. Um, so I'm going to try to think about what ways I can position my pieces to get that interior slots back without giving him too much. Uh, so I don't want to put it here. So if I put a piece here, he could get this corner. So I do not want to do that. Um, I think I'm fine putting one here. Gives me a bit to work with and he can't really do too much. So right now, one of the things I mentioned was to kind of think a couple moves in advance. So I see that he put his piece right here. And what I'm seeing when he puts his piece here is that I have an opportunity to get this corner. But I don't have any pieces that are able to flip into this corner yet. But I'm going to try to make a move that allows me to do that. So what I'm seeing right here is there's these four tiles across here. If I flip all of these, he can't really do anything to get them back because he has all of his other pieces blocking them. But I, it gives me an opportunity to get this corner. So as a result, I now have the first corner here. So I could, you know, I could actually, I might flip into this corner because he gave me both of these. So for now, we'll flip into this corner because we get a little bit more of pieces. But then I'm going to flip with my next turn, flip into this corner. And as a result of that, I have kind of complete domination of the board. Um, the more corners you get, the more kind of control you have because, see, as you can see here, there's just nothing he can do about these pieces. They're kind of locked in for me. So right now he's close to a corner again. I'm going to try to do that same thing where I flip his piece right near the corner so that I can get that corner. So to see this, I got this piece here. He couldn't flip this piece with his last move. Uh, but however, he does have kind of possession of a corner over here. I'm going to give him that one because I can't currently flip his piece here. But this is, again, not the best comp uh, computer. So I'm not too worried. Uh, maybe in a future video, I'll play one of the hardest computers. Or I'll play some online games and show you kind of how my strategy works in action. All right, we're just going to finish up this game. I'm going to continue trying to get some of these uh, wall pieces. So right now I'm just trying to get as many pieces as possible uh, because this is like kind of the end of the game. As you can see, I won. 46 to 18, so I kind of had a pretty dominant win here. All right, thank you for watching. Um, if you have any comments, please leave them. If you want me to make some more videos on Othello, let me know and I will do that. I'll maybe play some online matches so you can kind of see how I use my strategy in action that's not against a less difficult computer. Also, if you have any other board games you want me to kind of analyze and tell you strategies to win, let me know those as well. Thank you for watching.